Welcome back everyone. This is the second video in a series on making fabric flowers from scraps. And this tutorial is going to show you how to make more ruffled flowers. Different fabrics and different size strips are going to give you different results. This one is using a lightweight satin fabric. This one is flannel. This one is also flannel, but the strip of fabric I started with was much wider. It was about an inch wide, and as you see, it makes a very different ruffled flower than these two, but it's the same process, which is fun to get different flowers from the same technique. And this one is a little bit different because this one was made from ribbon, and the ribbon was about this wide. I'll show you how to make that and there's a process on how I added the glitter to this. This was not glittered to begin with. You actually put the glitter on before you even start the rest of the process. But first of all we're going to start with this flower right here on how to make this one. If you haven't watched the first video in the series I recommend that you go back and take a look because there are some tips and tricks in that that may help you in this video if you are not as familiar with sewing. I go a little bit more in depth in that one on how to sew it. What you're going to need, scissors, some scraps of fabric, this is a scrap of flannel that I had, and a scrap of ribbon as I mentioned, and a needle with a sharp point that will sew through the fabric, and some thick thread. This is actually crochet cotton. This is my favorite because you can really pull on it hard and it's not going to break because after you sew this whole thing you don't want it to break in the last minute. And then to put it all together at the end you're going to need a glue gun. I like to use high temp. This is actually a low temp gun because my high temp broke but the low temp just doesn't seem to bond as quickly or as well. However, if this is all you have, this will work. I just prefer the high temp. If you're going to make a lot of these, I also recommend that you use a cutting mat, a cutting ruler, and a rotary cutter. But if you don't have these, that's fine. You can absolutely just cut the fabric with your scissors. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. These are very forgiving. This scrap of flannel is actually a little bit pilled. It was washed. My mom makes baby items. She sews beautiful baby items. And after she washed this, it started to get a little pilled. And she gave me the scrap because she didn't want to sell this as one of her products. Sometimes that just happens with different fabric. But I really thought it would give an interesting feel to the flower to have that pilling. I decided to use that one. Now you're going to need about, um, my last video I said 18 to 24 inches. You can even go 15 to 24 inches depending on what you want your flower to look like. If you have more, you're going to get more ruffles. If you have less, you're going to get a little bit more depth of ruffles. Oh explain that as we go along. I'll show you a couple different ones. It does not have to be a big piece of fabric at all. Actually what I'm going to do to demonstrate that, how to put several strips together, is I'm going to cut from this section of the fabric. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is about seven inches. If you do end up cutting with scissors, you want the less even edge on the inside. So you're going to sew on the less even side and you want the straighter edge. If you have a straighter edge on the outside, it just looks a little bit better. I have my three strips here and they, just to make sure they're the same size, they look different for some reason. 
they equal let's see how long this is 14 about 22 inches so we'll see see how that works out it's more than I thought you want to have a knot in the end of your thread and the knot is going to get trapped underneath your fabric on the wrong side now I have a little triangular tail here I'm going to cut that off because I want a straight edge And that's curling funny, so I'm actually going to cut that edge off. Okay, now we're nice and flat. Okay. Then you're just going to do a basic running stitch. If you're right-handed, you're going to do the opposite of what I'm doing. If you're left-handed, you're just going to follow along. Make sure you always sew on the same side as you add your pieces. So if you decide to sew up the left side of the fabric, make sure all your pieces you're sewing up the left side. I will fast forward this until I get to the next piece. Now I'm at the end of my first fabric piece and you want to make sure that your needle ends up on the top on the right side of the fabric so that when you join your next piece you can fold down this raw edge and you won't see it on top of your flower and as you can see if you pull it it's starting to ruffle like this one. You'll add all of your strips in the same way, except on the second and all subsequent strips, you're going to go instead of from the bottom, you're going to go from the top. And that's going to allow this, this raw edge to be hidden as well. And then just continue with your running stitch. When they meet up, you can turn it towards the back, pinch your raw edges together, and gather it up. And those raw edges are completely hidden. You can see them there, but from the top you can't see them at all. I'm going to keep adding my strips and I'll come back when they're all sewn together. Now that I have all of my pieces sewn together, the 24 inches, about 24 inches of fabric ended up being perfect for this. So I recommend if your fabric is flannel weight to do that. As you will find, depending on the weight of the fabric is going to determine how long or how short it needs to be. But you can tell as you start adding them and ruffling them, you can decide, all right, I want a little bit more, I want a little bit less. Uh, you'll get to know what works best. At this point, you're going to need your glue gun. And you pull it as tight as you can get. Not crazy tight, but <laughs> it's not an Iron Man competition. But you want to finish this middle section. Depending on what center you put on your flower, you may not see this. If you put a button, for example, if I do this, you're really not going to see. That's way too big though. You're not going to see that edge, but a lot of the times you will see this edge. And I just like to cut it a little bit on a curve. It rounds it out a little bit. No pun intended, I guess. Alright. Yay! 
gives a little more of a finished look in the middle. And this point you just make it behave the way you would like it to. Sometimes you want to pull it a little bit more apart, sometimes you want to gather it a little bit more together. It depends on what that flower wants to do and what you'd like it to do. Some are easier than others and I, I don't understand why because I've done the same process and they, they all are a little bit different, just like real flowers. Now that is approximately what I'm looking for, just like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect right now because you're going to glue it. It's not going to stay completely well behaved at this point. And then you need a little fabric circle. You have to determine how big the back is. You want it slightly bigger than the raw edges. And again, just take another scrap of your fabric. If you don't have more of the same, you just have tiny, sometimes I just have little tiny scraps that I'm making flowers from. You can use another fabric. That one I used a piece, oops, that one I used a piece of the same fabric. This one I didn't even put a back on. I will eventually, but I haven't yet. This I used a different fabric in the same color family, but slightly different. To make a quick circle, you fold it in quarters. You pinch the folded edge and cut on the cut a curve. And you get a relatively circular circle that you can trim up a little bit. I find it easier than trying to go rogue and cut it all on my own. Does not have to be perfect. Alright, that's going to be the right size. You want it a little bit bigger and you'll see why in a minute. Now this is where this flower differs from the other one. With the other one, you want it to be flat, and I added the glue to this piece for this flower, because we're going to scrunch it up once the glue is on, you want to actually put the glue on the inside of this flower. Before I do that, I want to secure my threads. Here's my end, and you just simply tuck it into one or two layers to tie it off. Make sure that thread doesn't come out after you went through all this work. I put it through at least twice and on the second go you leave a loop and you put your thread through the loop which will knot that off. Sometimes your loop has an extra loop, no big deal. It's knotted off, it'll be just fine. And now, once that's secure, you can cut the rest. You're still going to have a little bit of leeway to form your flower once the glue is on. Not as much as before. So I like to scrunch it up a little bit like that so it's higher up and then put your glue on the rough edge if you do a circular movement with your glue gun like that you don't get as many strings put your piece over this is actually a little smaller than I should have used. This is where I like the high temp better. Because with the high temp, I let it cool just a little bit, and then I form it in my hand. But when I tried it with my low temp, I burned myself. So please be careful. 
Alright, I think that's ready. And then I like to form it with the palm of my hand to give it a little bit more ruffling. And there you go. As I said before, you can still play around with it, make it look the way you want. But these are fun if you want to add some depth. They'll stand up. You can even put them on stems in a vase, which would look really cool. I'm going to grab some center possibilities and I will be right back. I've chosen a glitter plastic embellishment. I'm really not sure where I got these, but I think this will look perfect. I really think that's pretty. And that is just a little dot of glue. Depending on the size of the embellishment, you can decide whether or not you want it on the center itself or the inside of the flower. If you're unsure, put it in the middle of the flower because you're less likely to get glue where you don't want it. But I knew that it would work out. And then depending on how deep the center goes, you can get this to be even more ruffled and have more depth. I really love these. And you can play around with them and make them look fancy. Now sometimes you will be able to see this back edge. I just trim that off. And sometimes you can see the raw edges of where you've joined two pieces. Again, I just trim that a little bit and then it pretty much disappears. This one, same thing. All right, there you go. There's the second flower. I hope you enjoyed this next installment in the Fabric Flower Scrap series. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Or if you have any tips that you found are helpful that you can share with other viewers, that would be great. I would also love to see your flower photos on Instagram. You can find me at Sophia Street Studio. Please feel free to share your photos and I'll be sure to take a look and leave a comment. Thanks for watching.